Uh, good morning, grade fives. Good morning, Setato. I started my lesson with a question. In fact, I posed the question as a joke because I believe that learners always get intimidated by mathematics. And because they think it's a serious subject, I thought I should just break the ice. Who can tell me why the maths exercise book is always unhappy? Anyone? Sir, so I think it's because it confuses people. Who else thinks something different? Tebukho? So I think it might be because it's a, it's a rectangle shape. He says because it's a rectangle shape. I like your mathematical answers. Fanele? I think it's, think it's always sad because it's difficult. The reason is, and Fanele actually has it correct, it's because it has so many problems. You guys have been solving problems the whole year. Or well, one of the problems we need to solve is defining what polygons are. Uh, polygons, for example, are shapes, and people use shapes all around, whether it's a shape of a house, a shape of a car, a shape of anything. And the learners need to understand what shapes are and why they're important. Who knows what this means? What this word means? Poly. Jabulo. I think it means the sides, the number of sides. The number of sides. And he is 100% correct. This word here, poly, means many. What does it mean? Many. Many. And so polygons have got many sides. But how many? Three or more. Now, what Nkumuleni is saying is a polygon needs to have three or more sides. Is it correct? Yes. Right. Now, some of you may wonder, why three and not two? Obi. Sir, I think it has to have three or more sides because if it has less than three, it cannot be, it cannot, there will be no angles because the shape has to have an angle. Perfect. A triangle. One, two, two three. One, two, three. Now what do you notice about this shape? So because it has three sides and three angles. She says it's got three sides. One, two, three. And it also has three angles. One, two, three. And what else does it have? So, so some, some triangles have equal sides. For example, an equilateral triangle has equal sides and and the scanner and the isosceles triangle don't have equal sides. Hey, that's a very good answer. We said it has one, two, three sides. It also has one, two, three angles. The other thing it has is one, two, three. These corners have a name. Who knows the name of those corners? They are vertices. Wow, Clara, let's clap hands for her. So I went from defining it together with the learners to actually giving examples of polygons in real life. Five-sided shape. A pentagon is a five-sided shape. Hex means six. Hex means six. Hept means seven. Hept means seven. Mm, at grade five level, the main shapes they need to be able to identify are the first eight of the polygons triangle, the quadrilateral, the pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon, and the decagon. They are named after the amount of sites that they have. And that's why pentagon is an example of a polygon, because it has five sites. Mm, I went on to give examples of polygons in real life, and the learners assisted me in this, because it is through them giving me the, the answers that I'm able to direct their thinking. Is this a polygon? No! I need two hands to tell me why it's not a polygon. Muzi? Because the shape, it curves. It there curves. is a curve. Can you have a curve on a polygon? No! You cannot have curves on a polygon. The reason is curves, like a circle, do not have angles. If you can't have angles, you can't have polygons. Now let's look at... I focused on teaching them three ways of defining polygons on, based on the number of corners or vertices, the number of sides, the number of angles. Some learners are able to understand what angles are better than they can understand what sides are. But 
if I had to do this, the same car, everyone gets a chance to at least master one of the aspects. So they have a chance to master one of three. Would you consider this a polygon? Yes. Yes, perfect. Because there are no curves, only angles, sides, and vertices. Some of them are able to master all of them. Many of them master two out of three, and a few master only one of them. But at least it gives them enough moving forward to have at least one of the definitions of polygons. Now what I want from you guys now at the moment is for two of you to come to the board and to draw for me an octagon. Uh, the learners that we chose to come to the board, first of all we choose because uh, the learners need to have an incentive. Everyone wants to be the one at the front. They want to be able to inspire their fellow classmates and we chose them because we wanted to give the opportunity to those learners because they may have lacked some confidence in the previous lessons and so we wanted to encourage them and empower them. And secondly, we chose them because they prefer doing things on the board or in their books. And so these are the kinds of learners you'll find busy when the, le the lesson is, is taking place, writing on their scrapbooks or things like that. And to prevent that, we allow them to do it for the rest of the class on the board. Let's look at what these two shapes have got. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. I focused mainly on them mastering the definition and not on covering a whole list of objectives. So the main lesson was for them to master the definition, say it out in words, and then write it out in their books so that they're able to explain it to someone who's younger than them or doesn't understand it the same way as they do. And this gives them the, the confidence to go out in the world and be able to express their knowledge because knowledge does not need to end in the classroom. Um, after the learners could identify the kinds of polygons we can have at grade 5 level, we gave them some work to do in their books because we believe it's important for the learners to be able to visualize and verbalize their answers and then finally write it out because they need to present it. Mm, we realize that in many lessons, the learners can have periods where they are not focusing and paying attention. And to make sure that they are paying attention, we walk around the class just to make sure that, in fact, the learners know that I might be walking towards their desk to see what they've been doing, whether they've been paying attention or not. And this gives them an extra incentive to make sure that they don't get into trouble with the teacher. And it keeps them on their toes and they are able to reach for excellence because they want to impress their teacher, which is one of the characteristics of children in grade five at our school. Mm, when we do our corrections, we don't do it just because the learners need to have it as evidence in their books. We do it because some learners may not have been able to understand the concepts in the initial phase of the lesson. We give them this opportunity to relearn the skills and relearn what their peers actually believe and what they think. And we teach further based on, on the fact that we see the parts that they've struggled in and we can focus more on those. And so we use it not, not only to get their marks, but to assess the levels of their understanding. What would you say a heptagon is to someone who doesn't know? A heptagon is a, a, site that, a, a shape that has seven sides and seven angles. There is a method of teaching that allows children to be the contributors in the lesson itself. It's called peer education. The learners seem to listen to one another better than they do to teachers. And we are not intimidated by this. In fact, we encourage it. A lesson must have learners speaking more than the teachers. And we allow them to speak to one another while the teacher directs their thinking and directs them by asking the right questions. Learners are able to respond and have a competitive spirit in which they want to do better than the next learner, but without intimidating one another, because they know that they belong to the same group. Mm -hmm.